Chris from 40 Thrive. How are you thriving? Just outside, figure this is a great opportunity to get in some morning sunlight. The weather is beautiful here in Ohio right now, and I'm not being sarcastic when I say that. Uh, it tried to kill us last week. It was like wind chill negative 32 degrees. It's a spring-like day today, and um, I'm actually wearing clothes out on my front porch today because uh, I'm just having some coffee. Um, I'll probably get a workout in a little bit later. We're nearing towards the end of the year, and uh, I run a small brewery that is uh, slowly introducing uh, some food menu items. So we have a lot to accomplish. Uh, we had a pretty productive night last night, and we're just going to hit the ground running again this morning. i got to hit the store, get some ingredients for um, a uh, fun little thing. Uh, uh, it's a rage yoga yoga class we're doing at the brewery. So how are you thriving here? Um, you know, I'm I'm just reflecting. I can't help but look back at all the things that I used to struggle with that I no longer deal with. And, and it almost seems like, it almost seems like, uh, <clears throat> almost, almost like, did I imagine that? Did I imagine that I used to suffer with, uh, these, these debilitating back issues, um, stiffness, soreness, off the charts, uh, blood sugar spikes and uh, crazy mood swings um, low energy it just it just baffles me um, you know how just the just the um, mere act of just starting to work towards doing better for yourself just doing right by your body. I mean, who would have thought, you know, you stop treating your body like a human compost bin and uh, suddenly it starts doing what it's supposed to do. Healing itself, maintaining itself. I mean, it doesn't maintain itself. You have to maintain. But I mean, the resiliency, um, all that stuff. So, I'm interested I really want to start taking on some more comments and, and engagement with all my viewers. Sorry, I am so sorry you have to be subject to this bozo hair. I don't know what's going on. I'm slowly but surely turning into my father where my hair just wants to grow outwards and oh well. Uh, so, you know, I I do get people in in my own personal life now that approach me that that talk to me about their keto challenges and um you know and I'm no expert but I'm willing to tell you what worked for me and um you know I had a friend come to me last night and say that uh that I don't know about this keto thing man like I I tried it and I actually gained six pounds and I said well tell me more about your routine and number one, I told her that uh, don't get alarmed at slight weight fluctuations. Uh, she's a female in her very early 30s. And that in and of itself will come with weight fluctuations. And if you're suddenly going through a dramatic change in your diet, and your body notices this 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 caloric uh, differential. It's gonna try and compensate because our bodies are meant to do that. We fight our bodies so much. Our bodies are just trying to do what they're meant to do. And we don't listen. We try to mask it with with prescriptions and um, you know over the counter medications. We ignore these signals. So.
here I come to find out that um, she wasn't really doing a keto diet. A lot of people confuse high protein for a keto food. Just because it's high protein doesn't mean it's keto. You still have to eliminate the carbs. And a lot of people are under the impression that, that nuts are keto. And that really depends on how low you're trying to turn your your carbohydrate dial down, to quote uh, Dr. Ken Berry. So, yeah, here I, I come to find out that she was sneaking midnight snacks of just going into the kitchen and, and just shoving handfuls of, uh, and I don't know what kind of nuts, but uh, but she was just shoving handfuls of nuts in her mouth. Um, so, yeah, part of being keto is not just what you eat, but when you eat, and incorporating, you have to get your body into sort of a intermittent fasting state, and so my advice to her was to, um, you know, make sure that what you're eating is absolutely as little to no carb as possible, make sure it's a whole food. Make sure you could recognize it as it either came out of the animal or out of the ground. Um, and, you know, if you can, skip your first meal of the day, push it as late as you can, and when you do break your fast, make sure it's with a high-fat, low-carb food, and eat to satiety. That's the important part. Don't just have a little keto bar. That's not what I'm talking about. Cram in four eggs and, and, and a side of bacon if you can. Uh, make yourself full. And, and that really helps uh, trigger things off. I mean, it's, 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 it's not about restriction, but you do want to put yourself into a little bit of a, a, into, um, a state where your body's going to start looking to itself for its own energy rather than trying to seek out carbs. I told her if she's still having those types of craving, cravings, she's still very carb addicted. So I just wanted to take a minute to reach out to you, engage with you a bit, and ask yourself, what are you still deal dealing with? Because you can do something about it. Whatever it is, whatever the ailment is, you can do something about it. I promise you that if you are at a point where now it's like, oh, but but I've got to go to the doctors for this and that, and it's getting pretty serious, I guarantee you, you ignored warning signs miles back of something that you could have addressed early on. And I'm not saying this to, to, to beat anybody up or, or shame anybody. That's not what this is about. Whatever you're going through, you know, I'm not telling you to ignore doctor's advice, but start, they're not going to tell you the proper diet, diet to eat. Doctors are not trained in nutrition. It's shocking and it's sad, but talk to anyone you know. Um, if you have any friends or family members that are doctors, ask them, how much time did they spend with you on nutrition in your, um, uh, in your time studying? And it's like they, they just skip right over it. It's like little to none. They're not trained to give out nutritional advice. You have to do that. You have to do your own research. And the most common sense thing you could possibly do is just start eliminating all the processed manufactured garbage. You can start there. I can promise you that our bodies were not evolved to eat um pizza rolls. That's not that's not what got us here. It was eating whole cuts of meat, real whole fruits and vegetables. Uh, it was not eating sugars and refined flours in excess. So start there and you will see a reduction in whatever symptoms you are dealing with. I'm not saying it's a cure-all, but you will see a reduction in whatever symptoms you're dealing with. And Start incorporating a little bit of exercise. One thing that I've noticed is helping me is a lot of pushing and pulling. For every push exercise, a push up, 
you know, figure out some kind of pulling exercise where you're pulling a weight up towards yourself or, or pulling yourself up towards something. Squats, uh, you know, even doing them with no weights is dramatically beneficial. You'd be surprised. We have to remember, people, this is not about looking tone and fit. This is about giving our bodies the signals that it needs to respond to stress, to uh, to just our our daily routines, to pain. We we've we've really put ourselves inside of a box. When you really think about how we live our lives, we put ourselves inside of a box where. We're, we're, you've heard of these uh, these sensory deprivation chambers. That's kind of what we do. We override all of our no, normal senses with we're constantly putting music in our ears, constantly having a screen in our face. We're constantly in a controlled environment. How is our body supposed to react to that? Imagine if you had a plant and you just put it inside of a cardboard box with artificial light, uh, you know, and these irregular patterns. Uh, not enough water. Would you expect it to survive? Would you expect it to produce fruit? Would would you would you want to reproduce that? But yet here we are as humans, reproducing under all these artificial weird circumstances, with you know all kinds of crazy stuff. There's a squirrel coming towards me right now, and I don't know whether to be frightened. I, I'm not sure what to think about this. How you doing, buddy? He's a he's a chubby, chunky, fuzzy little fella. How you doing, buddy? I'm just gonna ignore him. Can you see that? Don't worry. He's foraging. See? He's doing what he's meant to do. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He's outside, first thing in the morning, out there looking for his food, getting his exercise. He's eating low carb. He's eating low carb. He is. Isn't he, buddy? Oh, he found something there. He's, he was just checking in on me to make sure I didn't steal something of his. Oh, it's glorious. See? That's glorious. But, uh... But, yeah, to, to, to reiterate my point, we're over here with all kinds of crazy issues lately our youth are suffering with obesity with developmental issues psychological issues and we're over here scratching our heads meanwhile we're we're still strapping vr helmets to their heads you know putting them in front of tv screens for for 10 hours a day longer feeding them garbage because the cereal companies told us to way back when we were, you know, coming up in the 80s. And we think that's going to produce good offspring. We think that's going to uh, to turn out okay. Well, I'm sorry. You can't, you can't neglect what our bodies are meant to do and expect a good outcome. We're not, we're not designed to do that. All right. We've, we've traveled pretty far down the rabbit hole. All right, you guys. Cheers. Keep on thriving. We'll talk soon.